Hello, I'm Susan Walther, Director of Patient Engagement at FARA. In this education module, I will be reviewing the underlying concepts in genetics with a focus on the specific mutation arrangements that occur in people affected with Friedrich's ataxia. First, let's start with the basics. There are trillions of cells in the human body. Each cell contains many components that have individual tasks to keep the cell functioning. These tasks include replication for more cells to be made, protein production to replace components, waste removal to get rid of byproducts no longer needed for cell function, and energy production to keep all the components working at maximum capacity. The genetics of each person, or what you might sometimes hear referred to as the human genome, are found in the nucleus of the cell, seen here as the circle containing the teal-colored chromosomes. Each chromosome contains a known set of genes, and genes are made of DNA. It is important to know that although the nucleus contains the genetic map of each person, the proteins made from each gene contain instructions for where the protein needs to travel in the cell to begin its task. This is a picture of a karyotype where the chromosomes have been removed from the nucleus of the cell and lined up in pairs. One copy of the chromosome is inherited from a person's mother and the second copy is inherited from the person's father. The Human Genome Project analyzed all the genes on the chromosomes to figure out where each gene is located. The locations of genes is the same in every person unless a genetic problem has occurred to move genes around. Moving genes around means that pieces of chromosomes broke and reattached to other chromosomes. In Friedrich's ataxia, the gene related to the diagnosis of FA is always on the bottom half of chromosome 9, and the gene codes for the protein, also called frataxin. Genetic testing involves isolating the frataxin gene and looking at the DNA structure and code. As mentioned in the previous slide, the frataxin gene is located on chromosome 9. Chromosomes have short segments called P-arm and longer segments called Q-arm. And each arm has different numbers of genes. Higher gene concentrations are noted by darker bands and lower concentrations of genes are noted by lighter bands. Chromosome 9 contains approximately 900 different genes responsible for different tasks within the cells. These segments or arm designations are like GPS coordinates for genes. The frataxin gene is located at 9Q13 as indicated in the figure. Now let's talk about the frataxin gene. Genes have exons and introns. The frataxin gene has five exons separated by introns. Exons are referred to as coding DNA because the exons join together to code for the protein. Introns are referred to as non-coding DNA because they are removed when the protein is made. Even though the DNA in introns isn't part of the protein, the DNA in introns plays important roles in joining the exons in the correct order and can determine when and how much of a gene is made into protein. For the frataxin gene, there is a trinucleotide repeat in intron 1. This repeat is made of DNA molecules known as G and A, so the trinucleotide repeat is GAA. Here you see six GAA repeats. In people diagnosed with Friedrich's ataxia, this GAA trinucleotide repeat is a very high number. And when the GAA repeat gets too large, it affects how much protein is made from the frataxin gene. Let's focus more closely on intron 1 of the frataxin gene to better understand the GAA trinucleotide repeat. In people who are not affected with FA, 
They have two copies of the frataxin gene, where the GA trinucleotide repeat in intron 1 is typically in the range of 8 to 33 repeats. Repeat sizes in this smaller range do not affect the amount of frataxin protein made that is needed by the cells to function at maximum capacity. Frataxin protein is shown by the pink circles. Remember that everyone has two copies of the frataxin gene, one copy inherited from each parent. In people who are affected with FA, they have two copies of the frataxin gene where the GAA trinucleotide repeat in intron 1 expands and is typically in the range of 66 to 1700 repeats. Now, the expanded repeat size does affect the amount of frataxin protein made that is needed by the cells. Deficiency of frataxin protein causes depletion of energy made by mitochondria in the cells. Over time, continued depletion of energy and other effects of deficiency of frataxin protein cause cells to stop functioning, causing progressive decline in the central nervous system and the heart. A correlation is noted in the clinic with the age of onset of FA symptoms and the size of the smaller GAA repeat. For example, a GAA repeat size of 500 is expected to allow the frataxin gene to make slightly more frataxin protein than a GA repeat size of 1200. 96% of FAers have mutation arrangements of GA repeat expansions in intron 1 in both copies of the frataxin gene. When the mutation type is the same on two copies of a gene, it is called homozygous. This is the frataxin gene arrangement for a person who is a carrier for Friedrich's ataxia, like parents of a child diagnosed with FA. One copy of the frataxin gene usually has a GA repeat number of less than 33, and the second copy of the frataxin gene with an expanded GA repeat size. A person who is a carrier does not experience clinical symptoms related to FA. Remember, 96% of FAers have a mutation arrangement of a GA repeat expansion in intron 1 in both copies of the frataxin gene, and this same mutation arrangement is called homozygous. Approximately 4% of FAers have compound heterozygous genetic results, meaning the mutation types are different on the two copies of the frataxin gene. The majority of these different mutation types are known as point mutations. Point mutations are DNA changes that occur in an exon, the coding DNA for the protein. Point mutations are represented here as the matchstick-like symbols with the yellow tip. Point mutations can occur throughout the exons of the frataxin gene, but only one point mutation is present on the copy of the frataxin gene if it is a cause for a diagnosis of FA in an individual. To clarify, Different point mutations have been found in the frataxin gene, but a genetic test result will identify only one point mutation, not multiple point mutations. Like GA repeat expansions, point mutations also decrease the amount of frataxin protein made from the gene because most point mutations change the structure of the gene. In a very small number of genetic results, the other mutation type is a deletion in the frataxin gene, meaning that sections of exons are missing. For example, the deletion of exon 3. Think of point mutations and deletions as leaving out words in a sentence. If the DNA of the gene isn't complete, then the gene isn't made into protein. This graph demonstrates the frataxin protein levels detected in people with various frataxin gene arrangements. Controls are people who have two functional copies of the frataxin gene that are making 100% of frataxin protein required for cells to function at maximum capacity. Carriers are people who have one copy of the frataxin gene that is functional and one copy of the frataxin gene that is inhibited in its ability to make sufficient frataxin protein. 
Carriers with 50% for tax and protein are not symptomatic for FA. And then people affected with FA, designated here as patients, have two copies of the Frataxin gene that are impaired and make low amounts of Frataxin protein, usually 20% or less of the amount of protein needed for the cells to function long term. It is important to note that all people affected with FA can make some Frataxin protein. And most importantly, the Frataxin protein made in people affected with FA is normal in structure and function. It is just made in an insufficient amount. The fact that there is no aberrant frataxin protein means that treatment designs can target the downstream effects of protein deficiency and target increasing protein amounts in cells. Treatment can occur through direct replacement of frataxin protein, fixing the existing gene to improve function, or adding a new copy of the gene through gene therapy. How do clinicians identify genetic conditions and why can it take a long time to finally receive a diagnosis? Most people affected with FA likely saw a neurologist during their diagnostic journey. There are many, many genetic conditions that affect the central nervous system. So it makes sense that any one neurologist hasn't seen all of them in his or her clinic. A thorough evaluation should have included being asked questions about family medical history, including physical traits like muscle weakness or scoliosis, and known diagnoses like heart conditions. A physical exam is performed to include neurological assessments like touching your finger to your nose and measurements like height and weight. Based on the outcome of the physical exam, medical tests might be ordered such as nerve conduction studies, MRI, and echocardiogram to help define the differential diagnosis. Genetic testing is often the gold standard to confirm a suspected genetic condition. It is important to have a copy of the genetic result in your personal medical files. For example, clinical trials for FA always require documentation of the FA diagnosis through genetic testing and confirmation of the mutation types like homozygous GA repeat expansions. As you might have experienced, it can take years and seeing several specialists before finally receiving a diagnosis of a genetic condition. Why? In medical school, physicians are trained to look for horses, not zebras, meaning that common causes for symptoms should be ruled out first, the horses, before rare and genetic causes are considered the zebras. Here's a visual representation of family medical history called a pedigree. This pedigree shows three generations. Clinicians, especially geneticists and genetic counselors, will often draw up pedigrees because they more easily document the medical conditions in the family. Squares are males and circles are females. An arrow represents the person who is being evaluated during the clinic visit. In this pedigree, genetic testing confirmed the diagnosis of Friedrich's ataxia in the child being evaluated and the square is filled in. The parents decided to have the child's siblings undergo genetic testing. The older son is also found to be affected with FA and the daughter is found to be a carrier represented by the tiny circle. Pedigree should always be updated when any new family medical information becomes known. Although FA is a rare genetic condition, there still can be other medical conditions in the family that can have an increase for inheritance, like breast and colon cancer. Let's review some points to remember. The diagnosis of Friedrich's ataxia is confirmed through genetic testing. Please ask your clinicians for copies of all genetic test results to keep in your personal medical file. Genetic testing analyzes the Frataxin gene. First, a person suspected as having FA 
should be tested for GAA trinucleotide repeat expansions, followed by point mutations and gene deletions if only one copy of the Frataxin gene has a GAA repeat expansion. The good news is that FARs make Frataxin protein with normal structure and function. Although it has taken many years to develop effective treatments for FA due to the multiple body systems affected by Frataxin protein deficiency, current treatment developments are designed to boost amount of protein in cells or target other cellular pathways affected by Frataxin protein deficiency. Thank you for engaging with this educational module to learn about the genetic causes of Friedrich's ataxia. You can continue your learning about Friedrich's ataxia by viewing other education modules on the FARA website. Please visit curefa.org backslash trials.